Hello everyone and welcome to the conclusion of the Tata Steel Masters 2024. After 13 rounds of classical chess, we had a four-way tie. Uh, Wei Yi uh, ended up on eight and a half points, Gukesh ended up on eight and a half points, Anish Giri on eight and a half, uh, and Nodirbek Abdusatrov on eight and a half. And in the semi-finals uh, of the tie breaks of the uh, Tata Steel 2024, uh, Wei Yi eliminated Nodirbek Abdusatrov and Gukesh eliminated Anish Giri. It was a really, um, uh, the, the games were really really tough i'm gonna revisit some of them tomorrow so you guys can uh, have a better idea of uh, what happened if you haven't seen them uh, but yeah it was interesting because anish giri first uh, defeated gukesh and then gukesh had to uh, win on demand with the black piece he was able to do so and in the end he even won the match so this is the finals way versus gukesh i know it's a little bit sad to uh, you know end a 13 round classical event with a blitz game uh, but you know th there has to be a tiebreaker so uh first game between the two of them ended in a draw this is the second game which means if anyone wins this one, uh, that's it. Uh, he is uh, the winner of Tata still 2024. Wei Yi uh, with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. He goes for the reti opening. Uh, pawn to d5, we have pawn to e3 uh, and knight to f6. Uh, we have pawn to c4 uh, and now pawn to e6. So transposing into the Agincourt defense of the English opening. b3 and now bishop to d6. We have bishop to b2. Uh, and now there are uh, moves that have been played here. It's a fairly uh, playable position, but knight to c6 is a new move by Gukesh, and it is now already as of move five that we have a completely new game. And it does look a little bit weird, you know, uh, a, a good old Philidor would probably slap you on the face if he saw you blocking your pawn like that. Uh, but, you know, it's 2024, uh, anything can be played. So c captures on d5, uh, we have e captures, and now pawn to g3, where he is preparing to finger to the bishop and castle king side. We have castles, uh, bishop to g2, and now queen to e7. We have castles, and now uh, knight to e5. Gukesh wants to trade stuff on the e file and then advance his pawn to c6, and he will be very, very solid. So knight captures, bishop captures. Uh, and we trade everything. Bishop captures, queen captures, attacks the rook here. Knight to c3 uh, puts pressure on d5 and just pawn to c6. And Gukesh, uh, I believe, could not be happier with his position here. He needs a draw in order to force further tie breaks. And now uh, Wei Yi plays pawn to b4. Uh, the idea, of course, is he wants to play pawn to b5. So, okay, pawn to h5. Gukesh strikes on the king side. He wants to play pawn to h4. So pawn to h3, getting ready for that, and now bishop to f5, continuing development, and now pawn to b5. Now, uh, it, it's very interesting, uh, Gukesh played bishop to f5, probably with the idea of going bishop to d3, and now Wei Yi's b5 idea uh, really does invite bishop to d3, and it's even the top move recommended by the engine, but I guess Gukesh just didn't want to overcomplicate things um, against uh, uh, Wei Yi, so he didn't go for it. C captures on b5, uh, and then something like queen to b3, would put pressure on d5 b5 and uh, yeah it's a funny position but after bishop to c4 black should be uh, you know just better but up a clean pawn but gukesh did not go for it he played pawn to d4 and now e captures on d4 we have queen captures on d4 b captures on c6 b captures and now queen to f3 not going for bishop captures on c6 would be a bit too dangerous as this is a 3 plus 2 game. Uh, so bishop to e6 and now queen to e3. We offering a queen trade says, okay, if you trade, I'm just going to fix my pawn structure, get rid of my weakness on d2, and you will be stuck with your weak c6 pawn. So, okay, queen back to d7. Gukesh, of course, doesn't want to trade. He puts pressure on the h3 pawn. King to h2 and now pawn to h4. Uh, pushing further, and here uh, g captures an h4. You you might consider also a move like uh, pawn to g4, but you, you should consider it very briefly, because here just bishop captures on g4, and if you recapture knight, captures with a nice royal fork. Uh, so that's the problem. So g captures, sorry, uh, g captures an h4 by Wei Yi. Uh, rook f to e8, nicely aligning the rook with the queen, and queen to g5. As the g file is now semi-open, uh, rook to g1 followed by rook to g7 is what Wei Yi wants to do uh, at some point. So queen to d6, check. Queen to g3, now blocking, offering a queen trade. Again, he wants to fix his pawn structure, and rook a to d8. Of course, Gugash wants uh, Wei Yi to capture, uh, but uh, you know, in the meantime, he's putting pressure on that d2 pawn. So rook a to d1, and now bishop to c4. Attacking the rook, rook to e1 is impossible because you just capture, and then after rook captures, you pick up the d2 pawn. So here, rook to g1. 
uh, the move that Gukesh wanted to play as, uh, well, he would very much like to checkmate the Black King. However, with this pin, for the moment, you can't uh, uh, do that. So knight to h5 attacks the queen, and here we do have a trade. Queen captures, rook captures, bishop to f3 attacks the knight on h5, and now knight back to f6. We have rook to g5 now, uh, with the idea of rook d to g1, and uh, just uh, uh, busting through, uh, through the... Uh, h file uh, king to f8 getting rid uh, getting uh, the, the king off of the g file we have rook to c5 now attacking the bishop and the bishop to d5 as you also need to defend your uh, weak c6 pawn so bishop to d5 and now way ye trades we have knight captures knight captures and now pawn to d4 finally the rook um, uh, gets some squares uh, uh, you know before d4 it was pretty much stuck on d1 uh, hemmed in by its own d2 pawn rook to f6 going after the bishop here and now rook to d3 just defending uh knight to b4 attacking the rook and the rook to b3 we have knight back to d5 and now pawn to h5 uh nicely uh, advancing the pawn in the future h6 might be an idea but also you are stopping any uh, rook to g6 idea so pawn to g6 this pawn to g6 move is not necessary Gukesh should probably just uh, uh, make a solid move like rook to d8 or remaneuver the knight with knight to e7 uh, but he goes for pawn to g6 and he just gives uh, Wei Yi some targets h captures f captures and king to g3 it's uh, very very difficult to make moves here as both of them are now very very low on the clock they, they're b below the 10 second mark just uh, uh maybe not below the 10 second mark maybe here they were below the 30 second mark but uh, th they're mainly playing on the increment the two seconds so knight to e7 uh, we have bishop to e4 and now rook to d6 putting pressure on the d4 pawn and just rook to c4 here we ye could even win the game with uh, a move like rook to e5 but it's uh, impossible to spot with little time on the clock uh, point is that if you play rook captures on d4 there's bishop captures on g6 and that's just it rook to f3 is coming uh, regardless of you capturing the bishop or not even if you capture rook to f3 check will be deadly the king has to move away from the rook rook captures and now your position is just winning uh, so instead rook to c4 he ha he wants to defend his d4 pawn of course rook e to d8 now gukesh piles up on the pawn rook b to b4 and king to f7 we have king to f3 uh, king to f6 and now king to e3 rook to e4 maybe a little bit more precise but uh, seconds on the clock uh, rook 8 to d7 and now rook to b8 trying to harass the black king from behind uh, rook to e6 and now king to d3 just on pinning we have rook e to d6 and now rook to f8 uh, with check king to g7 uh, rook back to b8 and king to f6 gukesh would very much um, uh, like a draw here but way he plays on king to c3 we have rook to e6 and again pawn to f3 now defending the bishop so the king can remain here and maybe even go to the queen to the queen side we have knight to d5 with check king to b3 and knight back to e7 so just trying to be very solid here h4 by way e uh, knight to f5 going after the h4 pawn now king back to c3 as the d4 pawn was also hanging and here we have knight back to d6 uh, if you play knight captures on h4 uh, then just bishop captures on c6 you have to uh, d d defend the c6 pawn so instead gukesh just uh, goes knight to d6 attacks the rook here now the idea is of course that if rook captures on c6 you will play knight captures on e4 with check and then pick up the rook here but luckily you can also just take the pawn with the bishop which is what way he does bishop captures on c6 rook to c7 now uh, not allowing the bishop to move otherwise rook captures on c4 will win so rook c5 where the rook is nicely defended rook to e3 with check king to d2 attacking the rook and now rook to a3 uh, bishop to d5 and now rook to d7 of course you have to avoid the rook trade uh, here the, the rook was attacked and also the a2 pawn is defended so bishop, uh, rook captures on a2 is not an option uh, rook to c6 uh, and now rook to a5 uh, gukesh is now uh, uh, gukesh is now down two pawns and he can't really afford to trade any pieces we have bishop back to b3 king to e7 and now rook to g8 way ye trying to pick up another pawn so king to f6 rook to e8 and now king to f5 but now he just runs into bishop to e6 with check uh, and he was in this position on move 59 that gukesh resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here 
So really uh, a tough loss for Gukesh, but it is Wei Yi uh, who, who wins uh, not just this match, but also the Tata still 2024. And it's incredible. Wei Yi, who we haven't heard of him for, for quite some time. You know, we know he's an incredible player. He's a he's a prodigy. He, he, he always, you know, every second game he plays is basically an immortal game. Uh, and he played the, the classical tournament uh, incredibly impressively. Uh, he even ended the, uh, uh, check out the uh, live ratings after this uh, event. So these are the top 20 after the event has finished. Uh, so, okay, Magnus still first, Fabi the 22800s. Then we have Hikaru, Ding, Anish, Alireza, Yanni Pomerci, Westeso, and then Wei Yi uh, jumps into the world top 10. So he improves by seven spots. He was world number 16 before entering the tournament. And... Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely incredible. Gukesh also won 17 points. Sabdu Satrov also won 17 points. Uh, uh, Prague also won 27-47. So really, really uh, strong performances. Anish Giri also won 13 points in the event. Uh, so pretty, pretty incredible stuff. Ding lost 17 points. Nepo lost 10 points. Uh, yeah, but other than that, yeah. Wei Yi, absolutely incredible stuff. And what's more interesting is that he won a classical tournament where five candidates participated a world champion and a w women's world champion and you know he just uh, comes out on top so uh yeah it's a uh, definitely a strong event for him we would definitely appreciate seeing him in the candidates tournament but you know uh, one, one event will not grant you a seat uh, at the, the candidates tournament uh but uh, yeah fide also um uh, changed the, their uh, rules uh, changed the rule book on how you can uh, enter the next candidates tournament so i'm probably going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in the next video that i make where i'm going to mostly showcase way these games uh, from this tournament so, yeah incredible stuff hope you enjoyed this short coverage uh, like i said tomorrow i'm probably going to cover two or three way these games that i've missed uh, from the event because all of them like i said all of them you know every game we, we plays is an immortal uh even the one against uh, neuerbeck where he uh, eliminated him uh in in the tie breaks here was absolutely crushing with the black pieces so probably going to show that one uh but yeah yeah you know tough tough break for gukesh he he did everything right uh, he he lost that half a point to Pragnan on, the, on that three pole repetition. You know it could have been a completely different tournament. He could have uh, probably won sole first place if that didn't happen. But yeah, he still got to the finals. He still faced Wei Yi. Uh, but you know, uh, when you face Wei Yi, you, you 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 don't know what will happen. Uh, so I yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Lana, is the best wife in the world. Uh, Samuel Kane, Gerhard Henkelman, uh, Hans Anderson, and David Gasparian for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on everything that's happening in the chess world, plus, of course, checking up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.